So you want to turn this into this? Well, you've come to the right place, my friend. Let's have a look at Reed. Hi guys, and welcome back to Back of Beyond Tech. Now today we're gonna to talk about something close to my heart. And we're gonna talk to, about something that I'm very interested in. I'm really interested in data solutions and networking. So today we're gonna to talk about RAID. Um, and the reason we're gonna talk about RAID is I recently had a discussion with a few of my friends who I thought were um, tech savvy. You know, I would have put them in that tech savvy group. Um, and they seem to have a very different understanding of RAID than I did. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick video on it, you know, just to go through the pros and the cons of RAID and also give you a bit of an insight into what's actually happening under the hood with the different RAID levels because, um, you know, you should never think of RAID as a redundancy. RAID is not a replacement for a data backup. RAID is really good at what it's designed to do, um, but that doesn't mean it's not without its limitations and weaknesses. So with that said, the first thing I'm gonna do before we even start talking about RAID is to suggest that you never ever run a RAID array using software. Um, and when, by what I mean by software is never um, use, for instance, the Windows RAID tool. It's rubbish. Um, things like BTR, BTRFS and ZFS are completely different to that. They're file systems that are RAID aware and that's quite different, um, but that's a topic for another video. Um, if you are gonna go down the route of using RAID after this video, I would suggest you invest in a hardware RAID controller. So something like a Dell Perk or an LSI card. Um, HP also makes some very good cards. Now, what you're looking for in a, in, a, in a RAID controller card is you're looking for something that A, has its own microprocessor B has some form of memory buffer um, and typically you'd want ECC memory so that it corrects for errors and um, C you definitely want to have a hardware RAID controller that has a battery backup so that if your PC dies unexpectedly at least the RAID card is still going to be powered. So with that out of the way let's talk a little bit about RAID. So RAID is an idea that came around um, in the late 80s, so um, uh, actually the, the, the concept was invented at the University of California in 1987 by three um, researchers uh, and then in 1988 they published a paper that then kind of brought it to the, the wider attention. So the need for RAID came out of the data solution at the time. So at the time data was stored in very large very slow, very expensive um, data disks. So what these guys said was, well, why can't we take these consumer grade hard drives that were becoming more common and just kind of bind them into one giant drive? Well, why, why can't we do that? So that was a great idea because those drives were cheap for a start. They were easy to get hold of. And by binding the drives together, you actually got more bandwidth so you got better read write speeds and you got some form of redundancy as well which wasn't present before um, to the same degree I mean there was a level of redundancy in the system at the time but it wasn't as as good as what was offered or purported to be offered in, in the paper these people wrote about RAID so you can go away and look at that um, the, the the paper was written by David Patterson, Garth Gibson and Randy cat i think and i uh, i think if memory serves me right i think the paper is called something like a case for redundant arrays of inexpensive discs or something like that i don't know but search it on google and you'll get the paper guys so in a nutshell that's what raid is raid is taking a bunch of hard drives um, and turning all those hard drives into one volume that you present to your operating system or your file system or whatever to write to and read data from. Um, so kind of giving it away already, the kind of clues in the name RAID. So it stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks. Um, you'll also hear people talking about it in terms of Redundant Array of Independent Disks, but that came later. There's lots of different levels of RAID you can run. I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch on the four most common you're gonna come across. I'll talk about the pros and the cons with them. 
Um, I'll then talk a little bit about hybrid or nested RAID and then I'll talk about a couple of RAID specific problems that a lot of tech shivers don't really touch on, people never really think about, but are really, really common issues and if you ever work in enterprise they're the first things that, that people will talk about. So. You'll often see in YouTube or other videos that like get massive speeds, get massive read write speeds with RAID 0. So that's true, you can get that. So basically RAID 0 is when you take two disks or three disks or however many disks you like, you bind them together into one volume and when you read or write data to that volume, that data is striped across the disks with no parity, so it has no error check, it has no redundancy. RAID 0 has zero redundancy built into it. So you can have as many drives as you like writing and reading your data to. And that is why RAID 0 is fast, because if you want to read a file from your three drives or your two drives, you're actually reading separate parts of the information in that file from the separate drives. So that's why you get better read speeds. And similarly, if you're writing, you're writing across three drives, two drives, so you're gonna get better write speeds. It doesn't really scale so that you get like um, X percent more performance. RAID never really scales like that because there are, there are other bottlenecks and overheads working behind it. But RAID 0 is a good solution if you need really fast read write speeds. And it's also quite cheap. You know, you can set a RAID 0 array up with two drives and you're going to get better performance. So that's the benefit to RAID 0. Now, the negatives to RAID 0, I've already touched on one, is that there is no redundancy built into RAID 0. If one of your drives fails, you lose the array. Um, if one of your drives reports a, a, an unrecoverable error or a file that it can't read, there, that's it, that file's gone. Um, there is no way of rebuilding that array once a hardware um, fault occurs or once um, a file or a piece of data becomes corrupt. Um, so I would not advise that you run RAID 0. I, th I think it's a really bad idea to run RAID 0. Even if you're running it, um, and you should be running it with a hardware um, controller card, it's not going to protect you from just the, the general inbuilt weakness in the system. So please, please, please don't run RAID 0. Ignore other people who go on about the brilliant benefits to RAID 0 in terms of read writes. Yes, there are, but you're also opening yourself up to a huge world of hurt. Uh, take it from someone who's done it. I've been caught out using RAID 0 when I was at university. I was, I was running five disks in RAID 0 um, and I forgot to back, my, back up my data one weekend. I uh, came in on Monday, one of the drives had died, I lost everything. Well, not everything, I lost everything up into my back, my backup. So I think I lost about four days worth of data, which is not good when you're in your final year at university and, and you know, you've got your thesis to write. So do not, please do not run RAID 0. So the next level of RAID we're going to talk about is RAID 1. Now, RAID 1 again requires two disks. The difference between RAID 0 and RAID 1 is that instead of striping the data across both disks, you're actually writing the data to both disks. So you essentially have your data disk and then you have your second disk in the array and that second disk in the array is just a mirror of the first disk. With RAID 1, you will get no write speed improvement, but you will get a read speed improvement because you can read that data file from two disks. But essentially all it is is a mirror. The advantage to RAID 1 over RAID 0 in my book, which is why I, I, I would prefer to run RAID 1 over RAID 0, is that because you're running a mirror, <coughs> you have some form of built-in redundancy, and that's it. But, you know, equally, if one of your drives dies in a RAID 1 array, your array is dead. I mean, you can replace the drive and you can rebuild the mirror, <coughs> but that's it. If both drives die, then you're screwed, it's, it's completely gone. So guys, the next level of RAID we're going to talk about is RAID 5. Now, RAID 5 um, is kind of becoming less and less common in the enterprise space just because it has some inherent weakness in the system, but we'll talk about it anyway because I think it's a, a way that most people, it's, prob it's probably one of the levels of RAID that most people are going to run at home. So with RAID 5 you need at least three disks, okay? 
and what it does is it takes those three discs and it, it's you have file a to write what it will do is on disc one it will write part of file a on disc two it will write part of file a and then on the third disc it will write what's called a parity block that parity block is simply a calculation of the difference between the two data files now I've kind of simplified it there you never ever are in the situation where your parity files are all on one disk you know it will be spread throughout the three disks so the advantage of Rave 5 in my book is that you are getting a better form of redundancy so if we think about it like this guy so say for instance um, one day you come in and one of your hard drives has failed in your RAID array. There's not a problem with RAID 5. You simply replace that hard drive and as long as you have two of the chunks of data left, I mean it can be the parity chunk and a data chunk or it can be the two data chunks, and um, you can rebuild the other part of the array so you can get that data back. That's not an issue. Um, so with RAID 5 you do get a slight read advantage you know because you can read data off the multiple disks write speeds can be penalizing shall we say because you're not only writing the data you're also having to compute and write the parity block but it's probably worth it um i think i certainly think it's worth it i've run raid 5 in the past and um you know while it comes with its own problems um it's given me a certain level of peace of mind with my data um now the issue with <laughs> the issue with RAID 5 is this. Imagine that your RAID array has died, as we've just said, and you've replaced the disk and you're rebuilding the array. Now while you're rebuilding the array, another drive fails. That's it. That's your array dead. Um, it, it can only withstand one drive failure. Um, and because of the mean time between failure of hard drives in the enterprise space, what they found was that with RAID 5, because it was very write, um, because it was very read heavy, the arrays were being used for reading a lot, that they found that when they were rebuilding RAID 5 arrays, quite a lot of the time, another drive in the array would die. And, you know, because you're in the process of rebuilding that array, you don't have all the information required to then replace that disk and rebuild the array again. Um, so, to a large extent, um, RAID 5 is pretty much obsolete in the enterprise space. But for home users, it's still perfectly fine, um, you know, because as long as you're not pumping data to and from your drives all the time, um, like RAID 5 is probably fine for most people. But um, in the enterprise space, the way they got around this was with uh, RAID 6. Now, word of warning, RAID 6 is already uh, being forecast to be obsolete by 2020. For the same reason that RAID 5 is, but we'll, we'll talk about RAID 6 anyway. So RAID 6 basically introduces another level of um, parity check. So say for instance you have a 5 drive RAID 6 array, three of those, well, okay, so simplifying again. So three of those drives would have data blocks written to it, and two of those drives would have parity blocks written to it. So in the in the in, in the in the kind of experiment we were thinking about a minute ago where one of your drives dies and you're in the middle of rebuilding your array you can afford for a drive to die during that rebuild because two drives can fail in a raid six array and it's still rebuildable um, again with raid six the main reason a lot of people i know um, outside of the enterprise space don't run it is because it's expensive you need to add more drives um, <clears throat> also, when you're rebuilding it, because you have more drives in the array, it takes longer to rebuild that array. Um, and you get a, quite a hefty uh, write penalty because you're, you're writing the, you know, you're writing three chunks of data and then you're writing two parity blocks as well. Um, so it can take a lot longer to write data. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about hybrid RAID. Um, now, now, hybrid RAID is when you run one level of RAID on top of another, basically. So, at the moment, I um, can't see it now because I've gotten rid of my rendering machine, but the case is under here. Uh, and I actually ran, or I will be running when I put my, my Zen PC in this case, I'll be running RAID 10. So, RAID 10 is essentially where you take 
two sets of RAID 11 mirrors. So you've got two discs in, not RAID 11, sorry, what am I talking about? Where you take two sets of RAID 1 discs, sorry about that. So you've got one set of uh, RAID 1 discs and another set of RAID 1 discs, so two sets of mirrors. And then on top of that level, you run RAID 0. So 1 plus 0, you get RAID 10. Um, so with that, you get the redundancy that RAID 1 gives you. So the mirroring of the data that RAID 1 gives you. But you get the read-write advantage of um, RAID 0 from both, set, from both arrays. Um, I think RAID 10 is a really, really good solution to use. Um, it helped me out a lot rendering, so I was moving large um, data files around quite a lot. Um, it also gave me, like I say, a form of redundancy. Um, but, you know, as I said right at the start of this video, guys, do not think of RAID as a replacement for a data backup. Um, all of my data is backed up um, on an external machine to this network. It, it's in the house. There are a couple of other issues that are very much um, associated with RAID 5 and RAID 6. So, um, or in fact, the first one I'm gonna talk about is probably associated with all forms of RAID. Now, one of the things that people never really talk about is this idea of bit rot or the decay of your data over time. So the issue with RAID uh, and a RAID, even if you've got a really good RAID controller, is that RAID, um, it, it trusts the hard drives, basically. So think about this, guys. So think about a few years passing and your RAID array is aging. Mm -hmm. So over that time, your drives will be exposed to mechanical um, degradation, magnetic fields, etc., etc. And over that period of time, data can become corrupt. So you think, well, that's fine. I've got a I've got, a, I've got a RAID controller, it's checking for that. Well, it's not really checking for that. So what the, what the RAID controller is doing is it does, a, it does a process called scrubbing or patrol scrubbing. So what it will do every so often when the array is not in use is it will go to the drive and it will say, hey man, can you, uh, can you read that file? And the hard drive will go, yeah, no problem. I can read that file, that's not a problem. And then the RAID array goes, right, that's great. Let's move on. Other times, the hard drive will go, actually, no, I can't read that file. And then the, the array, the, the, not the array, the hard drive controller, the RAID controller, sorry, will say, well, okay, then let's, let's rebuild that bad file. Now, that's great in an ideal wor world, but we all know that hard drives lie. So different manufacturers of hard drives have got different um, things in the firmware that try and correct for unreadable um, files on a drive or, or bad sectors on a drive. <clears throat> now this can interfere with the RAID controller. So the RAID controller can go, hey man, can you, can you read that file? And the drive might try and read the file a couple of times and say the first time it's like, oh, actually I can't read that file. And then this kind of internal firmware within the hard drive kicks in and it goes, well actually no, wait a minute, I can read the file. So it returns that it can read the file to the RAID RAID controller. So then the RAID controller goes, well, that's great. But what you don't know is, is that file actually intact or has your data been corrupted? So over the period of years, this can happen a few times and it doesn't take much for the entire array to then become kind of infected because it's reading and writing and rebuilding blocks all the time. So if you introduce say a 1% error into your drive, over time that's going to have an exponential effect on your data. So it's one thing to bear in mind is that while RAID is great and what I've talked about is, is really interesting and all the rest of it, and you might want to set up a RAID array, there's a bit more to it, there's a bit of maintenance involved because the, the controller is not, you know, it's not going and checking everything essentially it's not it's not checking every single portion of your data in those data blocks it's, it's kind of patrolling and um, you know and it's asking the hard drive so that's the main issue is that the controller will always trust the hard drive and hard drives lie the next big thing uh, with raid the big drawback with raid arrays is what's called the the right hole 
<laughs> and I know what you're thinking, we all know what the right hole is, but no, 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 it's not that. It's something way worse than that. So imagine you're, let's say, for instance, this time we're, we're going to say a RAID 6 array. Say you're working away on your computer and then all of a sudden your computer just powers down. So in that instance, um, and this is why I, I would say along with all the other issues, to use a hardware controller that has some form of error correcting buffer. It'll become clear in a minute why. So in that instance, your computer turns off, all the drives in your RAID array um, power down at different times, okay? So when the RAID array reinitializes, re the RAID controller doesn't know if it's written data to all the drives, it doesn't know how much data has been written to any of the drives, it doesn't know if the the data transfer, the data write was complete. Um, so it doesn't know which drive to trust, basically. Because all the drives could return the message that, yeah, I can read the file, no problem, man. But it doesn't know, like I said a minute ago, it doesn't know how much of that file write was completed. So this is where you really need to have a hardware RAID controller and a hardware RAID controller that has a battery backup and some form of ECC memory buffer. Now, if you're in the position where you have that, that's great, okay? Because what happens in general is your PC will shut down, the RAID controller won't shut down because it has a battery backup, and it will realize the RAID array has shut down because it won't be able to talk to it, and it will say, well, wait a minute, I'm gonna store the last instruction I had, the last write instruction I had in the memory buffer. So then when you reinitialize your RAID array, it doesn't even ask, it will just write, complete the write function it was doing during the, during the kind of unexpected shutdown. And it will not flush that data from its buffer until every drive in the array has reported back that that write is complete. Now, if you don't have a hardware controller in your PC, um, that's where you get into the situation where you're in a right hole because the RAID array doesn't know which disk to trust, but it's got to trust one of them. So you're in the situation where I suppose in a RAID, three, RAID 5 array, so there's five, uh, you've got a 20% chance that it's going to pick the right drive depending on how far it's gone through the the right process If it picks the right drive, that's great. You know, it'll just continue on if it doesn't pick the right drive That means that you're going to introduce corruption or bit rot into your RAID array um, So that's the doom and gloom out of the way guys RAID's a very powerful tool um, And I think it can get you out of a lot of sticky situations I, um, you know if you've got the money um, and you've got the requirement within your workflow or your, or your network for some form of RAID array, then yes, you should set up a RAID array, but you should not go into it with your eyes closed. So guys, that's it. That is the video done. Um, like I said, I hope you find it useful. I hope you find it informative. If there's anything you think I miss or, or there's anything else you want to know about RAID, leave a comment in the comment section or hit me up on Twitter. Um, I'm always on Twitter. It's probably the easiest way to keep track of what I'm up to. I'm, I post it quite a lot. I tweet quite a lot. Um, you kind of see what's happening with the channel and things like that. And on that note, don't forget to vote in the straw polls. Um, I'll link the video in the video description at the end of the video, actually, where I ask your opinion on what you want from the channel in 2017. So that's it, guys. Um, have a good one. and I'll catch you again in another great tech video. Bye.